welcome to the weekly courses run by the fertility courses today i'm going to talk about an interesting topic uh, which is quite rampant or maybe quite prevalent in our local population uh, i'm going to talk about co-sanguineous fertility uh, marriages and the impact of it on fertility in general now if you look at the oxford dictionary co-sanguineous marriages means uh, it's related to or denoting people which are descended from the same ancestor the term comes from the 17th century where uh, latin uh, consanguineous means of the same blood now there's a mythological background associated to consanguineous marriage as well uh, it was in 597 ad that pope gregory the one advised that marriages between consanguineous spouses were infertile uh, then uh, furthermore in uh, citing Leviticus 18 the pontiff also declared that the sacred law which forbid a man to uncover the nakedness of his own persons uh, now if you look at the demographics there are around one and a half 1.1 billion people living uh, in countries where consanguineous marriages are common and they are more uh, distributed amongst north of Af uh, africa middle east west asia pakistan uh, afghanistan south india where they uh, almost account for 20 to 40 percent of the marriages the same percentage in the western world could be less than two percent whereas it could be more than 40 to 50 percent in the middle eastern uh, countries and approximately eight to ten percent of these children born worldwide are from the consanguineous parents uh, consanguineous uh, marriages happen across all the religions uh, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, as per a uh, world report conducted in 2011. If you look at the Indian scenario, uh, the Aryan Hindus of North India, uh, North India and the Sikhs, uh, they actually examined the pay degrees for the seven generations for the males and five generations for the females to ensure that they are avoiding inbreeding. However, if you look at the South Indian uh, tradition, consanguinity is strongly favored there. Now, it's, it's important to know why it happens. Mostly it's a cultural norm which is quite practiced uh, and prevalent in a particular community. Uh, it also uh, is needed to transmit the family values and norms as per the local communities. Uh, they also think that the members could be united of the same ethnic descent if they marry within themselves. Uh, it has also to do with the social economic status and the education in the family uh, that they do not look outside their own relatives for marriages. And for some reason, because they are marrying uh, amongst their own relatives, there is less marital discord and divorces which is uh, present in this type of communities. There are different types of uh, consanguineous marriage, which could be first degree or second degree. It all depends on how much the genetic material is transfer uh, could be inbred between the relationships and that is what affects the whole scenario in general. If you look at the health impact, there's no obviously increased risk of miscarriages, but in fact there is increased amount of total fertility rates. Now, the total fertility rates increase but there is increased amount of stillbirth and congenital anomalies which is more than the general population which in fact may, uh, may, um, may account for the increased total fertility rates and the increased total number of children born to consanguineous parents. Uh, there is also some evidence that there is increased amount of preterm labor uh, but su surprisingly the pregnancy induced hypertension is less. Uh, the most important effect of consanguineous marriage is the evidence uh, is the increased risk of congenital anomalies, heart disease, uh, which is more increased in first degree cousin, uh, cousins. However, the Down syndrome doesn't seem to be that much uh, increased. Uh, we don't know whether lifestyle uh, diseases like hypertension, schizophrenia, autism, diabetes, whether these are increased in this uh, population and whether that can be accounted by consanguineous marriages 
Now, when it comes to fertility, there is there are certain reports which say that the ovarian reserve is decreased in the women who, who are from the consanguineous marriages. Uh, they have a slightly lower median anterior follicular count and uh, they display a lower AMH as compared to women who are from not a consanguineous marriages. AFC counts uh, are all decreased and 69% of these patients in a particular study displayed that at the age of 25 years the AFC count was less than 9 which was quite in contrast to the non-consanguineous patients and their AMH values were also significantly lower as compared to the non-consanguineous parents. When it comes to male fertility, sperm defects and chromosomal translocations could be increased and which may affect the fertility rates, the fertilization rates or the growth of the embryo, uh, the culture of the embryo thereafter. Mutations in testis uh, specific gene has been found out which can cause fertilization problems and some morphological abnormalities in the sperm flagella have also been noticed. Uh, there has also been arrest, uh, um, reports of human oocytes being arrested at meiosis one stage which may account for reduced fertility in certain uh, sections of populations. Now how many children, that brings to an important reason how many children should be born from a single egg, a uh, single donor which could be either the sperm or the egg donor and what happens if this number is unrestricted or uncontrolled. Obviously, there are ethical, moral, and more importantly, health issues to be considered. Now, this was a paper which was published in Spain. They looked at the number of offspring per donor. And if you have three children born, then there is a very low risk of inbreeding. Uh, however, if you look at 25 children born from the same donor, the risk of inbreeding or consanguineous mating is 5.83. And that's why I think the rule of 10 children offspring per donor came, whereby the risk of uh, consanguineous mating is less than 1%, which is acceptable for a general population. Same thing if the sperm banks are uh, giving sperm uh, to a smaller population, then the chances of inbreeding increases, which in, in fact may cause more consanguineous mating inadvertently in future. How do we prevent this? We have to have premarital screening and counselling which should be started at the school age in uh, high risk populations so that they are aware of the implications of consanguineous marriages. Uh, if they are married and uh, then we can have preconceptional clinics and genetic counselling as the risk of autosomal recessive uh, uh, diseases are quite co more increased in this population then the community program should be targeted at a high risk screening for blood disorders in this community specific question that we should ask uh, when we see these patients in the clinic are inquiry about the presence of falling in their blood relatives whether they have any blood uh, defects congenital anomalies hearing problems visual impairment uh, mental restrictions or learning disability or developmental delay or failure to thrive in the children, whether they have any inherited blood disorder, unexplained neonatal or infant death in the offspring and epilepsy or any undiagnosed severe condition. So that's what we need to know about consanguineous marriages and fertility. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you.